Hello, I'm Mac Wilson from The Current, and I am privileged to be welcoming Adam Grandesil from The War on Drugs. Hello, Adam. How's it going? So one of the first things that popped to my mind is you mentioned a moment ago that you're in Austin right now. And on the cover of the new record, I Don't Live Here Anymore, you're standing in the snow. And mm -hmm. it came up in my my Facebook memories that one year ago, we got a blizzard here in Minnesota. So I was literally out standing in the snow. So it, it brought things full oh, wow. circle. I'm sure that wasn't the only blizzard you had last year, right? It was not, but it was one of those things where it's like, wow, things finally just took a turn for the fall here and uh, the the wintry the image once you actually take a look closer you've you've got your coffee what is that coffee on the cover of the record yeah that would be <laughs> this is the real interview the um the coffee would probably have been well we were basically staying in this airbnb or like this house a hundred feet from the studio so myself dave and anthony we'd wake up we'd make probably like two french presses um and then walk a hundred feet over to the studio so that coffee is was probably like like a Central American, South American, you know, because it's like lower acidic, lower acidity, uh, less, less fruity, more, um, more earthy. It's probably what would, we were cupping in the morning, as they'd say. I, I would imagine. But now we'd be cupping, now we'd well. be cupping John's because now John, our sax player, now he's roasting his own beans. So he's roasting Ethiopian. He's roasting Peruvian. It's amazing. He's really dialed in. So here we are, right off the bat, we could talk. Can we look forward to a War on Drugs branded coffee anytime soon? You have to talk to John Natchez. He, we've been trying to get him to commit, but he's saying his new rule is um, no roasting on the road. But we will try to get him. We, well, we'd like to do a coffee. Yeah, we, That's all we basically talk about and do is drink coffee and talk about it. So it would make sense for us to do that. Adam from the War on Drugs, we are chatting about your new record. I don't live here anymore, and I want to take a look back to the uh, to the live album that you put out last winter as well, because the last time that you and I chatted was at a micro show that you did for the Current back in August of uh, 2017, and it was right oh, at the, the Turf same Club. Time. Yeah, at the Turf Club, exactly. Legendary and, show for us within the within the group. I, probably I'm glad that we've that... never received, and that was like, you know, we've never the re, uh, the whole afternoon. It was like 300 people there or whatever. It was like, it was amazing. It was like, we still talk about that show. I'm, I'm really impressed that you, that you remember. It's one of those things where I'm like, well, there's no way that Adam will remember that. It was a wonderful memory for all of us who were there in the audience. So I'm glad that it had an impact for you as well. Oh yeah, of course. And uh, you're coming back to town playing at the the Palace Theater here in St. Paul for two shows later yes. on in in the in the winter. You've got a lot of shows lined up. So I'm curious when I listened to Live Drugs, that was an instance where you basically took the best parts of a whole bunch of live shows and put them together. And I don't want to say that it was necessarily influenced by the by the the pandemic going on. But when you listen to live drugs, sort of in your mind, like, well, in the event that I never get to go to a live show ever again, the War on Drugs gave us the best imaginable live album to remember what live shows were like. When you hit the road in a couple of weeks and months, do you plan on meticulously choreographing things as you would like when you put it together with live drugs? Or are you going to try to be like, hey, we're just lucky to be playing live shows again, wherever this takes us? I think a little bit of both. I mean, I think we are like beyond excited to um, be out doing what we love to do. And um, we basically, we didn't see each other for almost 20 months. And all the guys came out to LA for the first time in July. And we rehearsed for about 10 days. And we hadn't played any of the new stuff on the new record in person at all. And after that week, um, it was like really exciting. Just the level to which the songs were starting to take shape. And then uh, they were just out again um, at the end of September for another week of rehearsals. And it's just, we've never rehearsed this much ever for, I think because the record, because, you know, the record's not, it's not more complicated, but we just need more time to figure out how to do some of it, you know? And we wanted to kind of like change the way we use some of the technology on stage. Um, so I think it's a little bit of both. It's going to be like, we're going to be really prepared and inside the music. So, I mean, we don't go into it like the live drugs is like kind of 
a result of three and a half, four years, five years of being in a band together on the road, making albums together. And it felt like um, putting that record out and putting like an exclamation point after some of those songs and some of the, way, you know, the ways that we had kind of like let those songs evolve kind of let us open up this cycle and think of like a, like a new way to approach our show, you know? Um, so I don't think everything's going to be that significantly different, but um, I think we're just going to, we're just psyched to get out there and get inside the songs and, and rip it up, rip it up for two nights, St. Paul. It's almost comforting to me when you say that you're still wrapping your head around how you're going to play the new record, because I'm still wrapping my head around the best way of listening to the new record, because the war on drugs, they're on a very short list for me, where for one thing, every record has its own place, like a, a very specific sense of place of like where I was in my life physically and mentally when that album came out and it's not one of those that I I already know in advance. This is not one that I want to listen to hunched over my laptop at the kitchen table or listened on my phone at 11 o'clock at night. Like I really have to set myself up in the right place to listen to this record. So do you already have a, a similar sense of place? Like when, you, when you're thinking back to the way that you recorded it, do you think of a particular time and place? Um, a time and place for this record? Well, I do think of you know, a lot of the places that we, that the songs were kind of crafted, like when myself, Dave and Anthony went up to um, upstate New York and we demoed for a week in early 2018. Um, I remember walking around Singapore and like singing the chorus to our song, I Don't Want to Wait. Like I had, a, like, it's rare that I kind of start with a melody and a lyric, but I just like kept singing it over and I had like the whole chorus like mapped out and I'd sing it into my phone. I remember like um, when I was living in Brooklyn for most of 2018, um, walking across McCarran Park from our apartment and um, renting out Studio G in Brooklyn, which is where I did a lot of demoing and writing for like a whole year. So I remember all these little places and then, you know, a week at Electric Lady with the band when we kind of finally kicked off like recording it for real and um working at sound city with sean like for three weeks in late 2020 which is like the first time we were back together in person uh since march of that year and that's kind of when the record like took on a whole new form so yeah i have like all these little places and anecdotes of the record and places where i feel like things changed you know like went went into a, a, a great direction when you say that the record took on a different form in March of 2020, everybody is going to hear March of 2020 and think exactly one thing. But I'm almost gathering at the same time that this is a record that's been in the works for a long time. So we should not necessarily think of this as a pandemic record, more like one that, oh, yeah, this happened on Earth at the same time. But War on Drugs albums, they kind of live in their own time anyway. That's kind of what I'm gathering from this. Well, yeah, we started it um, way before, but... Um, yeah, basically we were working on it, then everything shut down and then me and Sean didn't get together for seven months. And, um, we were trying to do stuff on, e on email, which isn't really a real way to, um, make music. And then when we were finally in the room together, um, in October of that, of 2020, it was just like all those frustrations and anxieties about where the record was headed. And you could finally be in the room with your producer and like, put your hands on the console together and make big changes and like really get inside stuff and do all the things that you couldn't do on like a text chain, you know, about mixing or whatever. And that's when I think we finally got to like dive back into it. Um, but, um, but yeah, we're just, you know, we're just happy to have been able to, to make it, you know, and to continue to make it through everything. Adam, I was reading the, uh, the piece in vanity fair where they began with the, the anecdote, where up until the last second you're working on uh, turns of phrases to record for the record. And for an outside observer, that seems like a, a stressful thing to be observing. It reminds me of the way that you two make albums where you two, they'll be giving an, of an ultimatum, like, Hey, we, you have three hours until the masters are due and the edge will be like, okay, that's two hours and 55 minutes for me to overdub guitar tracks. Oh, and wow. that's just the way that they work. Um, is it, 
Is it as stressful for you to do that? Or is that just part of your workflow? I think at this point, it's part of the workflow. I mean, it's stressful in the sense that I know that day is coming where like, I'm going to have to tidy up all these little pockets of songs where I know they're not right or real, you know, like whether it's like a musical passage or whether it's a lyric that, you know, Sean assumes is probably totally fine. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm definitely going to re-sing that entire back half of the song or something. But um, it's just part of the process, you know? It's like, it also, you do it enough and it, it helps you prepare for the next time so that you're more prepared when you're writing. And um, and also it's it's part of the process to the point where it doesn't stress me out that much because I know how to go, you know, and I know that it's just, it's just time, you know? It's like, you just give it time to, to simmer and it'll, it'll, it'll make sense when it needs to. Adam, one of the big life changes that you've had over the last few years is that you became a father. And if there's one thing that we know about parenthood is that you only have so much control about what's going on in your life because your, your kids that, that they'll, things kind of happen on their schedule. So I'm curious how, what the relationship is then between your personal life and professional in that when you're back in the studio now, do you have this sense like, well, back in, in the real world, I know that I can't control this. I should loosen up a bit. Or are you like, okay, this is the one place on earth where I can get things exactly right the way that I want them. How would you say then that that has influenced the way that you work? That's interesting. Yeah. I feel like, um, I don't, I don't think about it like that. I think it's more like when I am in the studio, um, there is, that focus, you know, because you know that when you go home, you're not going to be able to like go home and tinker with like the idea. Like if I have like a couple synth ideas or something or a mix idea when I'm with Sean, it's like, that's the time to do it. Because when I go home, I'm not really going to have a million hours to like sit in my studio and keep fidgeting. So um, it, there's a, definitely a heightened focus and Sean was also a new dad. So we both kind of had that thing, I think, where when we were working, um, we just tried to make the most out of the, of the time. Um, but also, yeah, when we're home, when I'm home with, 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 the, with, the, with my kid, I mean, he loves hanging out in my little music room and playing synths and patching stuff in. And um, so when I go to, when I'm with Sean, it's almost like, it's like, um, it's not a chore, obviously. It's like, I'm experiencing the curiosity of music at home with him. And then I go to the studio and it's like, almost like it reminds me to also be curious, you know, and like also like have fun and it's not just like work. You know what I mean? I have one more question before I'll let you go, Adam, is that, um, appearing on the new record is Lucius and yeah we've been we've been longtime fans of Lucius at the current since they started releasing music we've had them play at, at various shows we've collaborated with them a lot and yet when you go to their page and you read about the sheer number of artists that they have worked with you're like oh wow I actually never knew that they performed on that song for example and it's just one example of that after the other so how far back does your relationship with Lucius go and how did you get them to be like exactly the perfect fit for the title track on the new record? Yeah, well, they, they make their records with Sean as well. So I think it was on the last record. Um, I, I knew them just from, you know, being in touch with modern music, but um, like I was aware of them. But on the last album, Sean had recommended that they come over to put some background vocals on something. And on that record, I wasn't so interested in backing vocals yet. Um, but anyway, they came over and they sang on uh, that song Pain. And it was really amazing to watch them because they just like have this thing between the two of them where they just look at each other and they both know exactly what the first pass is and then what they're gonna do to, on top of that. And so this time around, uh, and we became friends from the last record and we stayed in touch obviously. And, uh, this time I had an idea for some backing vocals. It wasn't necessarily what we ended up doing, but we had them come over and um, on, I don't live here anymore. They were just laying down like some pads first, really beautiful. Like they sounded like synthesizers. And then um, they did those, like the, 
like the big oohoos kind of in the choruses. And then towards the end, I think we were going to pack it up. And I was like, you know what? Because I hadn't done my vocal yet. There was no vocals on there. It was just music. And I was like, you know what? I, I was like, I haven't done my vocal, but I do feel like these two lines are the lyrics I'm going to sing. I was like, so why don't you sing it like this? Like, not like this, but like, here's like my phrasing. And then if I have to, if I change the lyrics, so be it. And we'll recut it. But it might, this is like what I think I might sing. And so they sang those two lines in the chorus. Um, and they, it sounded so huge. And like a month later, when I went to sing my, my part in the studio, and I sang those lines and they came up behind me and their vocals were in there. It was like an amazing feeling because it's like you're singing with them in the room. I mean, it's like, they are just really special. And it's like um, watching them work together is really amazing. And then obviously just, I mean, how it's crazy how good they are and they just have so much musicality. It's really fun. I'm really happy that they, you know, and it's not something that anybody can sing. It's not just like, the presence of a female vocal on that that it's like they are like really that's really really amazing singing so um yeah we we're really ha really happy about it well, i mean, i wish there was a couple more we could have done that on yeah thank you for taking the time out of your schedule today to chat with us about the new record and hey congratulations to you and the war on drugs on the thanks, release Mac. of i don't live here anymore thanks a lot thank you adam take care